WALB presents Dialogue, a weekly public affairs program exploring community concerns and spotlighting regional activities. Good Sunday morning to you, everybody. So excited to be talking to the one and only Adrian Jenkins. Of course, I have observed him, I, I want to say, since we moved here almost 21 years ago in the community, uh, you know, capturing moments right, and right. memories for so many. First of all, welcome to you. Well, thank you so much for having me. We, we watch you on Sunday morning. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. And, and, and your missus is here cheering you on. Right. Glad she, to have her here in here. the studio. And, and the reason we're putting the spotlight on you now is because you are now a part of a display exhibit right. at the Albany Museum of Art. Uh, right. This was launched, I think the original date was February 6th. Six, that's correct. And right. so if you have not, and there is your Mrs. Beautiful as always, oh, yeah. um, if, if you've not had the opportunity to get to the Albany Museum of Art, this exhibit will be up until May 14th. Right. But now it's your work, your photographs, but they're also celebrating somebody else who a lot of people may not be familiar with. That's correct. Uh, it was a photographer uh, by the name of uh, Richard Samuel Roberts, and uh, he was a photographer out of South Carolina, and uh, he was a regular portrait photographer, and uh, he just photographed people in the community, just as I do, and uh, his family after his death um, preserved his photographs mm -hmm. and later uh, presented them to the museum there. And uh, just so happened, um, Paula uh, Williams, who's the director at our museum here, uh, uh, found out about the photographs and asked for them to, to come here in Albany to be a part of our uh, museum exhibit. And after she saw the photographs, there was such a striking resemblance to, to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, so she asked me if I wouldn't mind being a part. And we're just honored that uh, she thought enough of us and thought enough of the work wow. that she would have us to bring out some photographs and display right along with his, showing and, that, con that oh, connection. And we do have some of your photographs that are in the exhibit, but I want to find out what sparked your interest, your passion, your love for photography. Well, that goes all the way back to junior high school. And actually, I, uh, I had no intent, I don't think, of being a photographer at the time. I didn't know that that would later become my actual passion. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I was really into music. And, really? Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, okay. I was into music. And uh, in junior high school, I was in the band, played trumpet, um, and uh, all through high school and all through the first of college. And uh, the way the photography came about was that at Southside, uh, my mother, you know, late Mary Jenkins, uh, had a uh, newspaper that they did called the Tiger Yale, you know, okay. Southside Tigers. And um, we had a Polaroid camera, and matter of fact, I have a Polaroid here that's very similar, similar to that, that. same uh, one. It's not the one. I'm sure there are some younger but, people uh, in our audience this morning that are saying, I have no idea what this Polaroid, is. Polaroid, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> right. So, so the, you, the, the ones that came out on the right. paper, we would and pull you take it out on the side right. here, and then wait 60 seconds. Right. And listen, and if it was cold, then you kind of put it in your coat or up under your Little arms. Little tricks there. Right. Okay. Trying to okay. warm it up. But um, they couldn't get it to work. And uh, so, um, the way I ended up actually going into photography was because there was a gentleman by the name of Ben F. Cochran, uh, my late mentor, and whom actually started the studio that I now uh, operate. Um, because I knew him, my parents were uh, educators, and he and his wife were educators. Okay. And uh, so I was in that area constantly because uh, uh, my grandfather had a business down in the Harlem business er area, and the studio was down in that same area. And so I would go down and uh, kind of hang out with Mr. Cochran. So I said, well, let me take it to him and let me find out exactly how to get it to work. And uh, in taking it, he told me exactly how to focus it and how to uh, get the exposure just right so the photographs weren't too light or too dark. Mm -hmm. So I ended up becoming a photographer at the school because I was the only one that could get the camera to work. Okay, all right. <laughs> then it so, was supposed to be. Well, apparently so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> apparently so. Because uh, it continued from then on. I uh, then later um, ended up at Monroe. Uh, high school where I then continued with um, the um, annual staff mm -hmm. um, doing photography there and as of course you know hanging around with Mr. Cochran more and more I um, ended up having more duties you know you start out kind of carrying equipment and you kind of graduate from carrying equipment to loading the camera to finally getting your chance to hold the camera and take your first shot okay. on an you, actual real job. Do you happen to job. remember what that was? <sighs> we did so many things I can't remember exactly but I'm sure it was probably one of the social 
events. organizations okay. or events that I'm pretty sure that he allowed me to. And this was back in the day too, when you had to develop. Absolutely, right? uh, there was not press the button on your camera and you see it instantly. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to take the film, and you know, if you saw old movies where you would go into the little dark room with right. the little yellow or red light and. Uh, we would shine the image down on it in larger and it then transfer the paper to through three or four different trays of chemicals and then finally see an image. Uh, but yeah, that was our method back then in terms of developing. So I'm just that far back <laughs> in okay. photography. And, and so how, how did you come into the ownership of the studio? Well, um, again, as my skills developed, I, you know, started shooting more and more. And uh, of course, my... Um, um, thing was if I was going to be in photography once I did decide I really wanted to do commercial photography is what I was my interest was it was in uh, in commercial in the fact that um, um, just like the catalogs you know old right. JC Penney catalogs things of that nature that was kind of what I had you know my my sights on mm -hmm. uh, not so much people and um, but the thing is, I was away in college. I uh, started out at Albany State, but Albany State at that time didn't have the emphasis in art with photography. Okay. So I ended up at Art Institute in Atlanta. Uh, I finished that. And I was actually in the Atlanta area, but then Mr. Cochran became ill. And so I was kind of traveling back and forth quite a bit, trying to help with the studio to keep things going there. And uh, I consequently mo ended up moving back to Albany uh, to kind of help and be closer so I didn't have all of the traveling. And uh, from that, I um, ended up, and that's a, actually a photograph of Mr. Cochran. I was there now. okay. Yeah, so that's Mr. Cochran okay. who started the photo uh, the studio. And it was about 1946 when he started it. And um, around the uh, late 70s, early 80s, um, in my finishing up um, school, um, he just decided in his illness that he just didn't decided to retire. And so I just kind of continued on from there. And maybe I think about a year later, that would have been around 82. Mm -hmm. I actually purchased the studio uh, from him and it's been going ever since. And I've only actually changed the name. The studio started out as Cochrane Studios. Uh, two doors down from that photograph that's on the screen now, that's the studio as it exists today. Uh, but that used to be the old Harlem um, drugstore. Uh, this is what that location is. So there's a lot uh, of history lot in, ter of history. in terms of the entire neighborhood and, and where you are. It is a lot of history there. Old North Carolina Mutual um, Insurance Company was right in the middle, and I actually got a chance to photograph one of the gentlemen uh, this past week uh, who used to uh, um, do collections mm -hmm. at the uh, insurance office over in Cordill for a magazine. Oh, uh, wow. So, I mean, you know, that was really exciting talking to him because I hadn't seen him in almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of history behind the studio, like you say, especially in that area. But in short, that's kind of my quick journey um, from the elementary newspaper all the way up to so now. That, well, yeah. now let's talk about the, the photographs that you have in the exhibit. We've seen a few of them as you were talking. Right. But I guess uh, people um, from young mm -hmm. to, to the more mature, right. uh, t talk about these. If well, you will. actually, that one is one of my uh, granddaughter. Uh, Miss Madison, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, of course, you know, on certain uh, holidays, you know, we'll try to get them in or birthdays, and we'll do little things with them. Um, but yeah, she's really a handful. I mean, you you took a lot longer than what you think to get that one <laughs> shot. One shot, okay. <laughs> um, All but, right, and then and, and are, are and these all black and white, by the way? Well, you've got the, a mixture. Well, it's a mixture. Okay. Of it. This particular one here is really interesting because uh, I know people in the community may know this gentleman. Uh, we call him Rabbit Man. He goes by a couple of different names, but uh, Mr. Jackson. And I'm still looking for a story that I think the Herald or even you guys may have done, but he supposedly lived to be about 106. 107. And uh, there was a photograph that Mr. Cochran had done of him prior, years prior before this one. Um, that, and he was, should have been in about his 90s. Uh -huh. But uh, I happened to see him walking past the studio one day uh, because I couldn't find those original files uh, to, to reprint Cochran's original. And he happened to be walking by. And so I He's stopped like, him, asked him, please come in, <laughs> let me do another photograph. And at that time, I think he should have been about 100 and two or maybe 103, wow. you know. But, uh, and then uh, this is Camellia. Um, this was one of the things that I was doing, kind of a Hollywood-style mm -hmm. uh, photography. That so, so you do, uh, 
uh, we're going to get into the types of photography mm -hmm. you do, but in terms of themes and, and moods and, and who yeah. is that? Yeah, well, and this is me at my much, much younger, <laughs> no gray, of course, <laughs> but right. with Mr. Cochran Mr. and three okay. other idols that, uh, who Gordon have Parks. had, Gordon Parks, who okay. did have an exhibit here in the museum, so I'm not the very first uh, first locally, but we had Gordon Parks who came and I had an opportunity to meet him. Okay. And the other gentleman was Manila Sneep, um, who was a uh, Life uh, mag uh, magazine photographer. And there's a great story behind him in that the photograph that you see there of Coretta Scott King, uh, back during the funeral, there were no black photographers hired at that time to actually cover the funeral. Mm -hmm. And so she said that she wouldn't have any press allowed in the funeral unless they allowed him to come in and photograph wow. that. That was one of the things I just found out. Well, I'll tell you what, we need to take a break here, but what, okay. a couple of things we want to share. First of all, if you would like to learn more about the work of A.E. Jenkins Photography, uh, Adrian Jenkins, if you want to uh, see that exhibit at the Albany Museum, again, you have until um, the May 14th, May 14th day. That's and then there is an upcoming um, reception. reception to be hosted by the Albany, Georgia chapter of the Lynx. It will be open to the public. This is April the 14th. I've got two numbers. I've got your photography studio number, 883-2966, and the Albany Museum's uh, number, 439-8400. We need to take a break. But when we come back, I want to talk more about, you know, your eye. What, what do you look for and, and the types of photography okay. you, you offer to the community? Stay with, stay with us as we continue to put uh, the spotlight on A.E. Jenkins. And welcome back, everybody. Continuing to put the spotlight on Adrian Jenkins, who has been in the picture business, photography business, for about 40 years. It has wow. been. Wow. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. Well, but, but you're being celebrated. Wow. You're well, being celebrated now you so for your work. For and, and actually, that exhibit at the Albany Museum of Art, uh, you have 15 right. photographs, photographs there. Yeah. And again, there, I believe this was a reception that was held there, or the well, first. That's actually the opening. The, the yeah. opening yeah. of it, right. of the exhibit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, I believe Mr. Roberts. Mm -hmm. there, there are 20 of his photographs yeah, in, right. in the collection. Now, uh, we were talking about the types of photography mm -hmm. that you do. Now, I, I, I can attest to this. I do know you, you handle uh, graduation That's right. photography, photography and those types of things. You've done your lady. <laughs> right, right. And then we've got, um, what, uh, seniors, parties, uh, yeah. uh, weddings. Weddings. We do a lot of that. But actually, the staple of our uh, company is really family portraits, uh, babies, and weddings. 
Okay. Um, those be showing those are the time. main things that we do more than anything. Those are you know typical senior shots that we do there, the graduation things uh, that we do. That's still high school with a little fashion flair to it mm -hmm. now. So you go do. on site as well. And it we doesn't do. have to be oh, there absolutely. in the studio. We, we do a lot of things on location. Uh, then weddings are a very big staple in terms of what we do because of our style that we still kind of give a portrait feel, but yet now even a candid, that's kind of a classic portrait thing mm -hmm. that we do in the studio there. And um, Wow. So, of course, we, we do a lot of things. Um, so, so the, what the eye, let's talk about the eye of the photographer. What do you look for to make it unique? And, and I see from every one of these photographs, I see warmth. Yes. Well, the key here is for us um, to try to capture something that's kind of natural. Um, I, I'm not looking for something very contrived or made up. Uh, if you look at photographs back in Mr. Roberts' uh, uh, day. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I know, love that. Baby. <laughs> How did you get that? Wow. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing here is, is to try to show personality. Uh, that's what we want, you know, a natural personality to kind of exude and just to come through. And so um, I'm just looking at that, that magic moment, you know, we're snapping photographs, but I'm also waiting on that one magical shot that really tells the full story. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's generally what we do um, in terms of our capturing those uh, precious moments. Okay. That's mommy to be. That's mommy to okay. be. And a uh, little fella there. All right. <laughs> Just as happy as he could be. And, and so, uh, oh, and family. Families. families. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I know them. Yes. There you are. Okay, yeah, so well, you've got several uh, cameras here, and, and one of the things that makes me want to ask is, is the changes. I know from the day of the Polaroid, as, right. you, as you said, to this, the digital photography. Right. So, so talk about the changes you've seen throughout the years as we continue to see some of the, sure. the photographs. Well, with that, uh, the photography itself in terms of the end results hadn't changed, but the method by which we capture that has changed quite a bit because of technology. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the uh, photographs uh, that I do today, which is all digital and electronic imagery, uh, whereas back in the day it was uh, film. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Roberts would have been doing photographs uh, on what we call plates, gelatin plates. Are these what we see and, in front well, here? And these are not the actual plates here uh, because that would have been glass. Okay. So this is an actual modern day uh, process of what he would have been doing back in that day because I can load the film in a dark room and uh, then bring this out in the light, slide it in the camera, and then take those photographs. Back in his day, he wouldn't have had this. He would have had to have loaded the whole camera in the dark. Okay. And okay. then bring the whole camera out. So these are even more modern today. But when you look at his prints, his film is actually this size. It's actually the size of the image that you see. And then they'll do a uh, contact of this to the actual paper to make that photograph. Today, uh, it's all computerized. Uh, it's all digital, and uh, we'll do the Is life thing. easier? Um, as far as the technology, it has, because with my first camera here, the uh, manual camera, uh, it doesn't autofocus, uh, but, so I would have to actually make sure that it's in focus, so, mm -hmm. you know, and then also it's uh, not auto exposure, which means that I have to determine the correct settings. In terms order. of light? Lighting, and, okay, that's okay. correct, right, whereas this one would do all of those things for you. So it does allow you to somewhat be more creative and kind of focus more on what your image is rather than having to, you know, struggle to make sure everything is still in focus or to make sure your settings are still right just for the exposure. All right, so, so th I'm going to ask you this, and I hope I'm not putting you on the spot, <laughs> but just like um, in the music mm -hmm. uh, world, you hear people, of course, we've gone to, to CDs, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of people have re rediscovered the vinyl to, right, and that analog, sound. Right. So in terms of photography, of course, life is easier with, with today's mm -hmm. camera, but do you like that film, or did you like the film process? Well, I think the film process, um, within itself, just like the music industry, it just has a different quality. And uh, I think those who are going back like you say, to the vinyl and those who may go back to the negatives. It's just that that's their exposure in terms of what they are used to and maybe what they like. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it's any better, better than okay. the other because if you weren't exposed to that, you don't, you don't know that. So digital is all you know about. You mm -hmm. don't know anything about the negatives and the quality of what you might get from negatives. Uh, digital has come a long way. In the beginning, certainly there are a lot of us who were still doing the negative approach, 
who was skeptical about because of the quality, you mm -hmm. know, especially in very large images. Uh, but digital has caught up and has come quite far in terms of the quality of what we can do. And um, to enlarge images, you know, the size of a wall, it's very easy today even doing it digital as opposed to still using film. Well, uh, this is airing in March, and you know what happens in May. We've got graduation. Right. So mm -hmm. if, if uh, by now have seniors started scheduling and, and taking those senior portraits and getting ready? Well, we're getting ready for that. Uh, usually for us, that's a... Um, early April okay. and then continue on through May. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we're just finishing up with what we call regular senior portraits right now, you know, that we do citywide and then throughout the school system, such as okay. these photographs with the digital numbers and seniors, those type of portraits that you're looking at now, they're in the cap and gown. Usually that'll start, like I say, in the April and then kind of continue on through May. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they want to schedule that, they this, is, call this is the time this to the do time that. To and then uh, wedding season coming up in what, May, June? Yeah, but you know, wedding season now is year round. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, anytime. There used to be a time when, um, you know, the summer months, June, July would be our highlight of the season and then it started to end up then being the Christmas, you know, right. November, December. But now we have ways Whenever they around. want to. Absolutely. Well, let me do this. I've got the two numbers. Uh, if you are interested in, in learning more about A.E. Jenkins Photography, you can call him at 883-2966. Also, the Albany Museum of Art, uh, to find out more about the exhibition, it's 439-8400. And just to put on your calendar, April 14th, the Albany, Georgia chapter of the Lynx will be hosting a reception as we celebrate uh, Adrian Jenkins, or A.E. Jenkins, and the late Richard Samuel Roberts uh, highlighting African-American culture. We'll take another break and we will be right back. Stay with us. And welcome back, everybody, on this Sunday. I am still talking with Adrian Jenkins, photographer in our area, the hometown, Albany, right, Georgia, right for 40 Albany. years uh, now. Yeah. And, and one of the things, let's go back. We had a little yes, precious I one. Yes, I was correct. Yes, 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 yes. That photograph is little Victoria, okay. not Madison. There are two of them because she'll get me. She'll say, Papa, that's not me. Oh, okay. And, how, and she's so, how old, Victoria? Uh, she'll be uh, three. Three? Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very and Madison good. Madison is four. All right. We wanted right. to make sure Miss Victoria sure got her got shout that. out right. today. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I've known about you over the years and, and your studio is that, and I think it makes you unique, mm -hmm. in that you have a, a, a team member who is I your do. missus. I do. And I do. she does it's superb Colette. 
makeup she and does. makeovers. Right. So talk absolutely. about that partnership. Sure, absolutely. Well, I just tell you, I've been so blessed in terms of her um, coming on board with the photographers, kind of uh, breathe a breath of fresh air for me. And even with my creativity, uh, she brings a lot to the table in terms of how I do and what I do. Uh, but uh, early on uh, in our meeting and getting together, uh, that was one of the things that she was really into, which is the uh, makeup. She had been doing that for quite some number of years and came through the Mary Kay and through several other areas, all mm -hmm. the way down to her own uh, makeup line, chosen cosmetics that she still does a little bit of. But with that, it's a, really a great asset because, um, you know, in my field where we do a lot of glamour, we do bridal work, photography, uh, even high school seniors. I was seniors, about to say the graduation. Right, uh -huh. ladies, uh, she's able to give them you know, that extra that makes a big difference. You know, we can do a lot in terms of magic without retouching and things like that. But uh, when you add the makeup to it, it just really gives it that extra glam. The right glam. colors. Look at right. it. Did yeah, she do this by chance? Yes, uh -huh. she did. Oh, That's look at that. Absolutely beautiful. There. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, again, if, if you want to uh, take in the exhibit at the Albany Museum of Art. It started Feb back in February, February right, no and it six. will continue until May 14th. That's and correct. you can call, there's your beautiful bride. Oh, thank you, there she is. All right, and, and are those your Yes, yes those are our I see Mrs. Jenkins. Right. Oh, wonderful. So you do have a mix of the color yes. and the black and white. Absolutely. And again, the late Richard Samuel Roberts uh, out of South Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, both of you highlighting African American culture. That's correct. Him. Representing the past, that's correct, yeah, and I'm you the representing the now present the present, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. And then, so also, if you would like to um, j schedule your high schooler, uh, your bridal um, family, family, because family reunions too. That's Children. right. And we've seen some some mommies to right. be and the little ones. Uh, you can give Adrian a, a call. That number is eight eight three two nine six six. And if you'd like to schedule a visit to the Albany Museum. 439-8400. Uh, this is going on in the Hodges Gallery. That's and, and, and again, I know this meant so much to you. It did. It did. I was quite surprised when she came in. When she came in, when she called and said that she wanted to talk to And me. this being Paula Williams. Paula Williams, okay, uh -huh. that's correct. I thought that maybe she wanted me to do some photographs of the museum or something. Uh -huh. And then when she sat down and kind of went over everything and it was explaining it to her, it still hadn't sunk in until my wife, Colette, said, you know, this is big. It's big. And uh, after I thought about it, I said, well, you're right. Wow. My first actual exhibit in a gallery, and uh, I'm so honored, and uh, I don't take it lightly, and I just appreciate all of those that have uh, kind of reached out and congratulated me uh, on such a um, occasion. And again, you've got about 15 pieces. Yeah, 15 pieces. And I've got to cool. ask you this: How difficult was it to select oh. the ones in the exhibit? Oh I mean, did she give you any parameters? <sighs> no, she said whatever I wanted to bring, and that made it even tougher. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> but, so I'm sure Colette. Yeah, you to absolutely, she did. It was a big help in selecting. And, of course, I, I wanted to do things that would be somewhat similar to what he did to okay. try to show the similarities of photography back then and even now. Okay. And that's how the uh, photograph of the, uh, my granddaughter came about, based on the fact that he seemed to do a lot of children and, and, and ladies and families mm -hmm. also. Okay. Again, we want to remind everybody, and there will be more details coming, but sure. the Albany, Georgia chapter of the Lynx will also be hosting a reception to honor this exhibit, we're proud of you. Thank uh, you. This, of course, uh, April 14th, and as I said, more particulars to come. Watch out on my Facebook page and uh, hopefully on community calendar. But thank you so much for capturing um, Albany, Georgia, and I'm sure you travel across the state as well. Absolutely. Wonderful, we wonderful. Well, congratulations. A.E. Jenkins Photography, uh, as he has his exhibit at the Albany, Georgia Museum of Art. Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody.